Hi everyone, and welcome to the first episode of QTube. Now, in the first episode of QTube, we will discuss a specific element. The elements will be placed randomly on the periodic table because I'm receiving them randomly from Engineered Labs, who is basically my supplier. I have a subscription there, which I told last time, and I receive three cubes each month, which we then will discuss. Now, in the weeks where I don't receive any cubes or I don't have any cubes left, I will be doing um, experiments with the elements that we had that point have. Now, to start with, why am I wearing gloves? Well, the reason why I'm wearing gloves is the fact that, um, well, these cubes, they are from ac acrylic, and if I touch them with my bare hands, they will leave fingerprints, which is, I think, not so nice. Uh, now, I used to wear like these latex gloves in my previous videos, but they are kind of, um, yeah, not nice looking. So I basically ordered these, um, yeah, etalage gloves, are they called in the Netherlands? And uh, they're basically used by people who uh, work with metals or stuff like that, and they don't want to have the fingerprints on there. So this is the reason why I'm wearing gloves. The other thing which we may need to talk about is what exactly is the periodic table? Now, the periodic table of elements is basically a system that we use to make an order in the elements. Now, the elements are basically existing out of three components. The first element is a proton, which is a positive part. Then we have a neutron, which is a neutral part. And then we have an electron, which is a negative part. Now, the neutrons and the protons reside in the core of the, um, of the atom. And the electron is like in a cloud around it. That's how you can see it. Now, the periodic table of elements is basically built from the ground up, where you have element number one, which is hydrogen, and element 118, which is organism. Now... Element number one has one proton, and element 118 has 118 proton. Now, you may guess what, um, yeah, how many protons this specific element is. Now, this is element number six, which is carbon. And carbon basically has six protons. And that's how we use the periodic system. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six. We have element number six here which we write with a big C of carbon. And now we also see something else here. If you look closely, you can see 12.011. Now 12, and we're going to write it down here, 12.011 is the atomic mass. And the atomic mass is basically the average um, that the mass is of a specific atom. Now atoms, I told you that there is neutrons in there, but the amount of neutrons can vary uh, in different what we call isotopes. Now, an isotope is a specific element with a specific amount of neutrons. Now, carbon, in this case, um, uh, basically exists in two uh, ways, which is carbon-12 or carbon-13. And 13 is basically the amount of particles inside the core of an element, which in this case would mean you have carbon-12, it will have always six protons because it's carbon. That means that it will also have six neutrons. Carbon-13 means it will have six protons, because again, that doesn't change, but it will have seven neutrons. Now average that out, average those masses, and you will basically get to, because one of them is a lot more, uh, uh, is, is, is happening a lot more in nature than others, so this is the average number uh, uh, of mass, of the atomic mass. Okay, now all life that we know of um, on, on this planet is basically carbon-based. In 80% in of the known molecules, and molecules are basically compounds of, of elements, in 80% of the molecules that we have, we will find carbon. Um, the human body contains 23% of carbon, um, and it likes to collect, connect to other atoms uh, in, a, in a very, yeah, very specific ways. It, 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 it just connects to a lot with other, um, with other atoms as well. It's a solid, as you can see, uh, on, in room temperature. 
Um, of course, there is there is way when when you eh, this is melting point and, and stuff like that, and it is a freezing point. But in room temperature, it's a solid. Um, diamond is a form of of carbon. Now you might wonder, like, how does something become a diamond? Well, you put a lot of pressure on on carbon, on the atom of carbon, or or a bunch of atoms of carbon, and it will eventually become diamond. Now, how did they find out that it was actually carbon based? Well, at some point they figured out that you could set fire to, uh, you could set diamonds on fire, and this is basically how they how they figured out, like, oh wait, uh, let's look at the atomic structure. It's it, Seems to be have a have a lot in common with uh, with carbon. Um, graphite inside of pencils are uh, are made of carbon. Um, also, when 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 people in the old days used to make pencils, you would have they would burn the tip of sticks, and if you burn the tip of sticks, you can write with them. It's also carbon based. Um, in all the food and all the drinks that you drink, there is carbon. Uh, carbon atoms uh, that, that form very complex molecules. Um, when you use the barbecue, there is like lumps of coal, like you, <laughs> you can basically see in this beautiful block. Um, that's carbon. Uh, and that is something that you can, um, yeah, basically set, set on fire. Um, you can clean water and air with, with carbon. So you can do this by, by using an active coal uh, filter or active carbon, uh, yeah, use, basically use active coal and let water run through it or a solution run through it and try to filter it. This is definitely something I'm going to show you in, um, in one of the experiments. Now, another way how you can basically change the structure of, uh, of, of, of carbon is when you put it together, right? And then you can create certain... Um, yeah, certain products. Now, one of the products that you can create is graphene. And graphene is used a lot for solar panels. So as soon as that was figured out um, in the early 2000s, uh, it became much easier to create solar panels. And, and it's something that we, um, that we still use to this day. All of the fossil fuels that you've ever heard of are made, of pl made out of plants or, or, or animals. Now, that means that all those fossil fuels are also carbon-based. Um, so carbon, in that sense, is one of the most important elements that we know is know of. And this is also why we, why we sometimes speak of like carbon-based life. Our, our, the life, if, if you didn't have this element, a life uh, on Earth would definitely look different and, and very likely do not, will not look like it, um, like it looks today. Plastic is made of oil, uh, which is a fossil fuel, and therefore also made out of carbon structure. Uh, carbon fiber, which is a, a very interesting product, which can stand enormous heat, like 2,000 degrees Celsius. Uh, it can um, it can can really um, hold on to to extreme temperatures. It's very, very complex, or not a complex uh, element. It's a very important element that, um, yeah, we use for almost everything in uh, in everyday life. So yeah, it was this was the first element. We now have started off with our periodic table of elements. Now we're going to put it here. I'm going to do elements every single week. Very likely, I will may will I, I may do a slightly different order than with my uh, my Dutch videos. Um, but that has to do with the fact that I'm in my Dutch videos, I, I used a couple of other cubes from another vendor, which I'm not going to do in this uh, in this uh, playlist. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, hit the uh, subscribe and uh, like button. And I'll uh, see you guys next week for episode two. Have a good week.